Hello, today I'm looking at the XTAR VX4 cell charger, battery charger. This is supplied with a 20 watt USB Type-C PD charger adapter and a Type-C to Type-C cable. Now let's have a quick look at the box. Um, so this is all batteries, one solution. It can do 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride, 1.5 volt lithium ion, 3.2 volt uh, LIFEPO4 lithium ion phosphate and 3.6, 3.7 volt conventional NMC lithium ion cells. That's called visible mixer. Uh, visible because you get uh, parameter data on the screen here for each of the four charging bays. Mixer because you can mix different types of cell. Well, you can with one exception, you can't mix LIFEPO4 and lithium ion because you have to set this machine to either be doing LIFEPO4 or lithium ion. You can't do both at the same time. Now the party trick of this uh, charger is that it's the first capacity tester for 1.5 volts. I think this should say lithium ion AA. Um, so specifically these AA 1.5 volt lithium ion cells it can actually test the capacity by doing a charge, then a full discharge with uh, milliamp hours and milliwatt hour measurements, and then of course a, a charge at the end again. So let's use the supplied cable. Um, now I'm actually gonna power it from this XTAR. Oh, what's this one? This is the uh, PB2SL. Um, because it's got the display on it that tells me how much uh, volts it's requesting and how much current is being um, transferred to this unit. So let's power it up and see what uh, comes up on the display. Okay, all segments tested. And then it settles down, pre-selecting lithium ion 3.6 volts. Um, I think if you press and hold this button, you can pre-select, uh, you can select that it does LIFEPO4 instead. You can see here that it's requested 12 volts. Um, if it can get 12 volts, it will ask for it. If it can only get five volts, then it's happy with that and you can charge, but it limits the current, uh, particularly if you've got more than one cell. Okay, I've put it back to lithium ion 3.6 volts. Let's now start putting some cells in. So I'll do an NLO, an NLOOP nickel metal hydride. Um, now, funnily enough, the AA cells, you seem to have to wiggle them slightly. I think I know why, but I'll come back to that. Um, what else can we put in here? Yeah, let's put in one of these uh, lithium ion 1.5 volt uh, rechargeable cells. Now, XTAR uh, kindly supplied some of their max power cells. So this is a 26650 lithium ion, uh, six amp hours. I think this has a sustained 10 amp discharge current. Uh, this is a little 16340, 850 milliamp hours and a 2.5 amp discharge current. So let's put in this 26650, I think this one is, yeah, 26650, uh, lithium ion 3.6 volts, so it's set for that. So what I can't now do is put in a lithium ion phosphate because it would actually charge it up to 4.2 volts, which would probably damage it. And finally, let's have one of these 3,500 milliamp hour lithium ion cells, which um, this new one is rated for 800 cycles, not the usual 500 cycles. So let's put that one in. Of course, this is also um, a lithium 3.6 volt. And so it will charge up to 4.2 volts. Okay, let's have a look at what is going on here. So the nickel metal hydride um, has a flashing indicator there and it's charging at a low current, 150 milliamps. Now when the charger has decided, yes, this is actually nickel metal hydride because the voltage hasn't drifted up into the range of lithium, it will up the current to 500 milliamps and complete the rest of the charge. It looks like it's pretty much uh, fully charged anyway, that cell. The lithium ion 1.5 volt, it detects that fairly quickly and is now charging that. But you note that you don't see the voltage and that's because lithium ion 1.5 volt charge at, well, <laughs> voltages between about three point something and five volts. You can actually just hook these straight up to five volts and they will charge. And I don't know whether you can see this, but there is actually a little flashing green LED, which is inside the wrapping of this cell 
um, so that you can see that it is charging. And the two lithium cells, of course, uh, you can see the voltages there. And the uh, charge current is based on various factors. Um, an internal resistance test, um, which surprisingly this one is only charging at 500 milliamps, whereas this one is charging at uh, one amp. Now this charger can charge at up to three amps, but the situation has to be uh, fairly uh, well set up. So let's take all these cells out and see if we can get one cell to charge at three amps. First, I'm gonna check the charging current, single press of the left-hand button. So it is selected to charge at three amps, if it can charge at three amps. Let's put this big lithium ion cell in one of the bays and see if it will charge at three amps. Uh, first, it does this internal resistance test. So there's a short delay and then it selects the current and yes, it has uh, selected three amps for that cell. Now, because this is a rules-based uh, charger, if I put a second cell in, if you put two cells in here, it will only charge at up to two amps. So we'll put in a nickel metal hydride. Um, the instant it detects what it is, then you can see it reduces the current on the uh, lithium ion cell down to two amps, even though this cell is not gonna take anything like two amps, but uh, two cells at up to two amps. If you have four cells up to one amp, the outer two bays can take up to 32650 cells. Now this is a 32650 cell, but it's got these welded uh, threaded uh, inserts on each end, but actually it does fit. First thing I've got to do is change it to lithium ion phosphate because this is a 3.2 volt lithium ion phosphate. I don't want to overcharge it. So using one of the outer bays, uh, let's put this in here. I'm gonna pull that right back, stick the threaded rod behind it. And you can see that a 32650 does fit in there. It's doing an internal resistance check and now it's raised the current because we've only got one cell in here, it will charge it at three amps. And even with the 32650 in this end bay, I can still put an 18650 in the next bay and there are a few millimeters of space between the two. Yes, it's okay to put a lithium ion in it with the lithium ion phosphate setting, it will just take this up to 3.65 volts, which it's very close to being at. So of course it thinks it's a full cell. Now, as I said, um, this is the first charger that can grade these lithium ion 1.5 volt cells. So let's put these in here and I'll show you how to uh, go into the grading mode. Now it doesn't matter that it's set to LIFEPO4, um, lithium ion 1.5 volt uh, is something completely different. And it's just checking to make sure they are lithium ion 1.5 volt. And that takes a short period of time. I can't remember what current it uses. I oh, know it's gone up to uh, the best part of 500 milliamps. Uh, it charges lithium ion 1.5 volts at 500 milliamps. It also, also charges nickel metal hydride 1.2 volt at 500 milliamps. Uh, you can't have a higher current than that because these are small cells. So to switch the charger into grading mode, press and hold the middle button and you'll see that the indicator switches from charge to grade. It now just shows you that it's charging them, no longer tells you the current, although I think you can see that if you press this uh, middle button, but then it quickly flips back to just charge. And then once these cells start discharging, once they've uh, got to full charge and start discharging, it discharges them at 300 milliamps and uh, discharges them right down until they switch off completely. Now, these cells are interesting. These older uh, lithium ion 1.5 volts have a fixed output of 1.5 volts, um, which goes all the way until the cell is depleted and then cuts off. These newer ones, as well as having this little flashing green light in the top, um, they discharge at 1.5 volts, down to probably 95% um, or 5% state of charge. Then they switch to 1.1 volts. And the purpose of that is pieces of equipment that have a low battery indicator 
Um, if you don't step that voltage down at the end, then the low battery indicator is never going to detect low battery and you won't get any warning that they're suddenly going to cut off. So yeah, these newer lithium ion 1.5 volt cells have this step down to 1.1 volts before they then cut off completely. And if this LIFEPO4 indicator is uh, <laughs> triggering you a bit, it is me. I can press and hold the um, chemistry selector. It's now lithium ion 3.6 volts. But of course, it knows that these are all lithium ion 1.5 volts. They've stopped flashing now. So it's certain they're lithium ion 1.5 volts. And uh, the, the uh, 4.2 volt thing is not applicable. So I will leave these charging uh, for a bit now. Um, it's only pulling 0.6 amps from this thing. And if uh, I've got two of these big 21700s, uh, 5000 milliamp hour cells in here, so they're going to last a fair amount of time. Let these get fully charged and then we can see what happens when it starts discharging them. And while it's doing that, I suppose I might as well peel off this display protector. Now these four cells are still charging, but if I press the middle button, I can see uh, the charging currents and you can see that this one's gone a little bit lower. It's down to 385 milliamps, the others are 440-ish. Um, so we can see that uh, this one is approaching full charge because the current is being tapered down. Now the battery charger kind of hints at this because it's showing one bar full and I've got a feeling that this goes up to two bars full with the top two bars uh, animated, but I'll come back if that happens. And now you can see that uh, with the current for this cell having dropped to 200 milliamps, it's actually showing three bars full and it's only animating the top bar. So yes, it does give you some indication of how far advanced the charge process is um, because it can see the current falling. Um, I've knocked it back to the charge mode because I had to change power bank because the other one was running out of juice. Just a little close up here, um, cell 2 is now full, cell 1 is pretty close to being full, that's dropped to 60 milliamps, uh, cell 3 is about half the no nominal current, cell 4 is taking a bit longer, you can see, uh, the fl oh that's gone full, but you can see the flashing green lights on um, these two cells, cell 3 and 4. Uh, indicating that these two cells are still charging. Right, all cells are fully charged. So now let's switch to the grading mode. Uh, press and hold that switch. Now, of course, the grading function initially does a charge. Um, so it's going to um, charge them again. They're all at very low milliamp count, so that shouldn't take too long. And then it'll switch to discharging. So now all four cells have switched to discharging. Um, they've yet to clock up one milliamp hour, but I don't suppose that'll take too long. What we can do here is check the discharging current. Now it's fixed at 300 milliamps. And since these are 2500 milliamp hour cells, um, 25 divided by three, is eight, more than eight in fact. So the discharge time is going to be more than eight hours, um, which is quite a long time. So it does take quite a long time to grade these cells. Um, I have done this already once and um, one of them came a little bit up short of 2500 milliamp hours. Two uh, were quite well in excess of that and one was just shy of 2600 milliamp hours but I'll let this um, continue discharging for a little while. They've now clocked up um, 10 or 11 milliamp hours, 11 actually. Now if I press this milliwatt hour button, we can also view uh, milliwatt hours. Now they haven't uh, drifted apart much yet, but they will do because these will all be at slightly different voltages, not precisely 1.5 volts. So you can look at milliamp hours or milliwatt hours. I did think actually with this DMM, let's just go through and look at the uh, four voltages. They should be close to 1.5 volts, but let's just check. Okay, we got 1.516, uh, 1.509, so they do vary a bit. Uh, 1.504, 1.508, 
and 1.5 uh, exactly there is one other function on these buttons if you press and hold this third button um, it just turns off the display backlight you can see that the uh, images are still there just about uh, press any button and the backlight returns so to sum up um, the VX4 charger can charge and grade uh, nickel metal hydride um, it does occasionally seem to uh, terminate these a little bit before the top but that's not uncommon with uh, cell chargers you can charge and grade meaning check the capacity of your lithium ion 1.5 volt cells which uh, as far as uh, this charger states no other charger can do that uh, you can charge and grade LIFEPO4 3.2 volt cells and of course you can charge and grade uh, lithium ion 3.6 3.7 volt cells they of course charge up to 4.2 volts now you can also partly charge sodium ion by sticking them in with the thing set to LIFEPO4 of course it won't charge them fully and uh, you can't really grade them because it won't take them up to a full charge and it won't take them down to an empty charge so it doesn't really tell you what the capacity is so I will put uh, links in the video description below this video um, but that's a first look at the XTAR VX4 that's it for this video so cheerio